Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3 of our Blender 2.8 tutorial series. Um, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling the candle holders that are made out of a glass-like material um, and we're going to be making different shapes and sizes um, and we're also going to be talking about the concept of modifiers in this episode. Um, we're also going to be using some modifiers on our candles so without taking any further to explain it let's just jump right into it. So. Here's the scene I had to rebuild um, when my blender crashed. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a really simple candle holder. That's basically a cylinder with some extra geometry thrown into it. So what we're gonna do is make sure your little 3D cursor's in the center here. You can do that hit by hitting uh, Shift C to recenter it. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to first turn back on screencast keys so you can see what we're doing again. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a cylinder. So let's press Shift A. We're going to go to mesh, cylinder, and then add it in. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go to, into a side view to kind of get a better look at this. So I'm going to press 3 on the numpad. Um, in my case, I'm actually going to hit control and then press 3 to get to the um, right side to um, view it. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to scale this around and kind of get it to the right size. So what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode. Now to make it a bit easier to see because this background is kind of in the way still, I'm going to press Z on the um, keyboard and we're going to go over to wireframe and then click on it and this will give us a wireframe view. Um, you can also just hold down Z and then go over to the, um, op the option you want and when you let go it will select it. Um, so in this case we're going to go to wireframe and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first shrink this down. So while in edit mode, we're going to make sure everything's selected with A, and then we're going to hit S and scale it down a bit. Um, we'll make it about that size. We might want to make it a bit bigger or smaller later. Um, next, what I want to do is I want to make it a bit taller. So we're going to press 1 on the keyboard to go into vertex select. I'm going to press Alt A to deselect everything, and I'm going to press B to go into box select. And when I click and drag, we can select all these top um, vertices. And this only, it'll only select all the vertices in um, X-ray mode. And you'll notice if I deselect it while in solid view, if I do another box select, you'll notice it looks like they're all selected. But if you come to the back here, you see it was actually covered up by the front one. So just make sure that if you're doing a box select and you want to select all the um, vertices, you're in wireframe mode. So let's do another box select. And you can see that time it actually selected all the vertices. So. Um, anyways, with them selected, I'm going to scroll up, out a bit, and we're going to press G and then Z to lock it in the Z-axis. We dragged it up a bit, and you can see it's already kind of taking shape. So if we tab out of edit mode and go to solid, it kind of has that general shape. Um, but we need to make actual like thickness to it. And there's a couple ways we can do this. In this case, I'm going to be extruding a lot. So let's go back into wireframe and tab back into edit mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to basically extrude the inside and then make a base for our candle holder. So let's start with the top. So I'm going to box select the top. And what we're going to do is it helps a bit if you go back into a 3D view. Um, we're going to press E once, so we're in extrude mode. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it to drop them exactly where I extruded them. It's still there. It's just overlapping the other vertices. Um, but they're still selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press S and then scale it in a bit. And we want it to be super thin because it's made out of glass. Um, and we don't want it to be too like uh, distorted or anything like that. So we're going to we're going to scale it just a little bit on the edge. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to scale it straight down. So to get a better view, we're going to go back into a side view with control numpad three. We're going to go into wireframe view. And with those faces still selected, I'm going to press E. And then you see we're extruding, but I'm going to right click again and we're going to press G and then Z and we're going to drag them down a bit. And we're going to drag them down right to about here. Um, and you can see that it is a bit smaller than the outer um, geometry. So if you come to the top here, you can see now that we have a little bit of an edge forming. So I'm going to go back to that side view. And what we're going to do is we're now going to make a base or actually, sorry, we're going to close in the top. Um, so I hit um, if you want to select the ring here, let's uh, just hide this plane with H real quick. Um, so if you want to select um, this whole circle of uh, geometry, in this case, I'm going to go into edge select. Um, 
So this is the bottom one right here, but we want to select the um, one on the inside. So what I'm going to do is hold down Alt and then click on this edge, and it'll select all the edges that are in the circle. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to press E again to extrude, and I'm going to right click to um, place it back to where it was. Then we're going to press S and we're going to drag it into the center, and then I'm going to left click. And now what we're going to do is we're going to merge them into the center to close the hole. So I'm going to press E, right click, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt and then press M on the keyboard. And you can see we have different merge options. So in this case, we're going to do merge at center. So it merges all these faces at or all these edges at the center. And when we click on that, you can see it closed off the hole there. So now let's do the same, but on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to alt click this bottom edge and then we're going to press E, right click. Then we're going to hit S and scale it in a bit, then hit E one more time right click and then we're going to press alt m and merge at center and that's about it we already have a candle holder um, but if you notice if we press tab to get out of edit mode it looks a little rough it looks like it was made in a 3d program it doesn't look smooth um, we can kind of fix this um, what you normally want to do with your objects is enable sh uh, you want to enable smooth shading so with our object selected we're going to go object shade smooth and you can see now it looks pretty smooth, but there's kind of some weird lighting going on at the bottom. Um, and you can see on the inside, it just kind of looks super smooth. We don't want it to look that smooth. We want it to look kind of sharp. Um, same thing for the bottom. And there's a lot of ways you can fix this. We're going to go for kind of a quick and dirty method today, but we're going to introduce the concept of modifiers. So what are modifiers? Modifiers are basically Blender's non-destructive workflow to let you edit your geometry, but always get rid of it if you want to. So you can kind of like roll it back. Um, so in this case, we're going to add a modifier called a subdivision surface modifier, which will basically make our object super smooth, but add a bunch of geometry to it. So it might slow down your program a little bit, only if you have a lot of faces, though. So with our object selected, we're going to go to the modifiers tab, which is a little um, wrench. And then we're going to go to add modifiers. And in this case, there's a lot of them, but don't worry, we're only going to be using a few. Um, actually, I think we're only going to be using like one or two. Um, but anyways, we're going to go to the generate section and we're going to choose subdivision surface. Now, what happens is when I click on this, you notice our cup looks kind of weird now, but that's because it's smoothing out all the geometry by adding more of it. Um, so if we go, if we go to um, object and set it back to shade flat so we get that bumpy surface, you see it actually added a bit more geometry. So you can turn off the view of this by clicking this little monitor icon. And you can see if I tab between them, you can see one looks really smooth and one looks a little rough. Um, and we can turn up the subdivision too. So over here in the subdivisions settings, we're going to turn viewport up to two and you can see it's starting to look really smooth. Um, but we don't want it to look that curvy. We want it, we want it to look sharp. Um, so even though we have this subdivision surface modifier, all the underlying geometry is still there. So if we tab back into edit mode, you can see it's still there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some supporting faces to kind of add some sharpness back, but while making it look still, while still making it look super smooth, basically. So we're going to do that with edge loops. Um, you use a lot of edge loops to kind of tweak the subdivision surface modifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an edge loop everywhere that I want a sharp edge. So we want one at the top here. So let's start out by adding one on the outside of our um, candle holder. So I'm going to hit Control R and you can see there it pops up our edge loop. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it to the top. And you can see how it's shifting all that geometry. Uh, we want to do the same to the inside. So we're going to hover the mouse right here. You see it snaps to the bottom, but that's fine. We're going to drag it up. So with the edge loop on the inside of our little um, cup, we're going to click and then drag it up. And we're going to keep it right by the top. And you can see now we're kind of forming that sharp edge at the top. And now we're going to do the same at the bottom. So tab into edit mode and we're going to add an edge loop. And when we drag it down, you can see we have our sharper bottom. Um, I'm also going to add one on the inside. So let's con hit control R and we're adding it to the bottom here. Drag it out a bit. And there we go. So, oh, sorry, we need to add one more to the bottom of our cup. So tab back into edit mode. We're going to click here on the inside of our cup, click, drag down, and there you go. And let's also do one down here. So click and then drag out. So 
if we get out of edit mode, you can see our cup looks super smooth. And now if we go to object and turn back on smooth shading, it looks like a super smooth little cup. So that's really cool. Um, I'm gonna add a few, bit more geometry to it though, just to um, make it look, just to prevent some like lighting errors or artifacts. So let's hit Control R on the outside and hit mouse wheel up a, a couple times and then click and then right click to leave them there. So you can see there's our nice little cup. I'll do the same on the inside, add a few edge loops, just kind of place them there. And there's our cup. So you can see how we can use modifiers to kind of quickly tweak our objects, but we can always turn it off. So if I wanted to remove this, I could just click this X right here and we no longer have all those nice sharp edges. It's kind of hard to see, but if I hit Control Z to bring it back, you can see it's much more smooth. Um, and again, you can always turn it off visually by clicking the uh, little monitor button like that. Um, and you can also turn it off in the render, but you don't always want to do that. So let's quickly add two more candle holders to our scene. So I'm going to go into a side view again by pressing Control 3 on the numpad. Um, let's go into wireframe view. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our object. Um, so that's really easy. All we have to do is hit um, Shift and then D, and that'll duplicate our object. Um, but while it's duplicated, I'm not going to left click yet. I'm going to press Y to lock it to the Y axis, and we're going to drag it over a bit. Now this one we want to make a bit smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode, and we're going to shrink the whole thing, but we want to grab all the geometry that's um, going to be shrunk. So one easy way to do this is I'm going to hit Alt um, A to deselect everything. And then while in edge select mode, I'm going to enable um, proportional editing, which will basically grab all of our geometry and move it along in the direction we're going within a certain influence. Um, the best way to show you is by doing it. So I'm going to hit B to box select, and we're gonna select all of these top rings while in um, uh, X-ray mode. Um, what's it called? Wireframe mode, sorry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to making, while this little button is checked blue, we're going to press G and then Z, and you can see that circle that pops up when we're moving things in proportional editing. And you can see if I drag it down, it'll actually drag all those faces with it. Um, and if you scroll wheel up, you can actually influence a bit more. So if I scroll it to the whole object, it'll actually move the whole object, if you can see that right there. Um, but we don't want to move the whole object. Um, we just want to move some of it down. So I'm going to press uh, G again and then Z, and we're going to scroll it down to about there. Um, and we're just going to drag it down, make it a bit smaller, and then click to place. And then we're going to do this one more time. So we're going to tab out of edit mode, shift D to duplicate, drag it along the Y, tab into edit mode, and then we're going to hit G and then Z and drag it down a little bit more. And if we go into solid view and then tab out of edit mode, you can see there's our three different candle holder shapes. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, I know we did a lot in this video, so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to Google them or ask down in the comment section below. Um, in the next episode, we're gonna be making the actual candle shapes, um, and we're probably gonna get around to texturing since this is kind of moving pretty fast. So. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any comments or concerns, again, leave them down below. And um, that's about it. So thanks for watching and have a good one.